Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, so today I'm in St. Peter's Church and Graveyard here in County Wexford. And the church behind me here was built in around 1818, I think. So today we're going to go around and read some of the old headstones here. There's also people buried here from a tragic event that happened back in 1835 on St. Patrick's Day, the 17th of March. So let's go and look for their graves as we go for a walk around here. So we'll read this one here first as we make our way around and I'll tell you some of the story about the boat that sank and those unfortunate people drowned back in 1835. So here we have a grave here. It looks like we have a child buried here. In loving memory of Elsie, dearly beloved child of Hamilton and Dora Kennedy, Tusker. Lighthouse Dwellings, born September the 27th, 1893, and died August the 7th, 1896. So a very young child. I wonder where the lighthouse keep is. It says lighthouse. Lighthouse Dwellings. In Tusker. Tusker, yeah, Tusker Rock is the very old lighthouse in Tusker. And I've done a story there before about that Aer Lingus plane that crashed off Tusker Rock. So look at that beautiful old railing that goes around the grave. Another small grave here with the iron railing around it. And here we have in fond remembrance of Ethel Holbrook, who fell asleep in Jesus, March the 25th, 1878, aged one year and ten months. Very sad, another small child back in the 1800s died. Beautiful looking grave. So just in front there you can see that old house and I think that was the old house that the priest used to live in near the old graveyard here. Oh my goodness, look at the cat. Oh my god, he's gorgeous. There's a cat in the window over here guys, we have to look at this. He's got the strangest looking face I've ever seen. I don't know if you'll see it from there. Look at the face of that cat. Doesn't he look like a, a, a grumpy, a grumpy old woman or an old man? Look at that for a cat. I think I've seen one of those cats before on YouTube. Somebody made a funny video about him. Yeah, the angry cat. The angry cat. So this place looks really nice here. The grass is cut. It's well kept nice to see the old graveyards that they're still being looked after and look at this beautiful one here although it is broken in parts this wrought iron huge wrought iron railing that goes around this one here and I don't see any headstone or any inscriptions on it so I'll get back to the story about the boat that sank in Wexford in 1835. So on the 17th of March, 1835, the HM Coast Guard boat was leaving Wexford Quay, going to Rosslare Fort. And there was a number of people on it, men and children. 
and back in the day you know like any other day St. Patrick's Day you had people who were celebrating people were happy on the day and these men and children were were in Wexford town celebrating the festivities and all they had to offer there was markets on the day there was food all that kind of stuff was going on in the area so on the 17th of March that day the HM Coast Guard was travelling from Wexford back to Rosslear Fort when it ran into difficulties around 3.30 p.m. Um, a, a storm came, a violent storm brewed up. The boat got into difficulties. And I think they were halfway home. They were nearly home back in Ross Lair Fort. And you'd have all the mothers of these children were waiting in Ross Lair Fort. The children were excited get back to the fort to tell their mothers all about the day what they were doing and everything else so unfortunately the boat ran into difficulties and uh, crashed and, and sank so the pilot boats from Rosslear fort who were nearby saw there was the boat with that you know the boat was in distress and went out immediately and unfortunately they couldn't see any occupants at all in the area now the story goes there was two pigs on board that boat and two pigs actually made it back to flat land and were brought onto land by the pilots from Rosslear Fort so unfortunately seven men and five children drowned on that tragic day in 1835. So we'll be, we will be going over to pay our respects to these people and read their headstones. So we'll read a couple of other headstones while we're here guys. This is to the memory of John Ronan, or sorry, John Ronan was the stone cutter that made this headstone. William Cardiff, who died on the 4th of November 1825, aged 44 years. We have a huge route here railings going around here as well look at that those beautiful designs on it and we see those like chest tombs inside there and it's just impossible to get in there or read any of those now there's also um commonwealth war graves here as well sailors who who drowned and were washed ashore in County Wexford in memory of Henrietta Condell who died November 1932 and that one there so we keep going guys around and that's just some of the story of the tragic story of those poor unfortunate people that drowned and here we have um, a loving memory of Samuel Raymond Sutton and he died on the 22nd of October 1879 it looks like age 45 years old 
And just beside that, we have another Sutton family member in well-beloved memory of Martha Sutton. Um, I'm just looking for a date on this May 18, something that's worn away, probably weather-worn. And just around this one here, we have in loving memory of John Wise Whitfield Esquire, who departed this life at his residence, Hilltown House, Broadway, on the 12th of August, 1861, aged 65 years old. And buried here also is his wife, Lucinda Jane, who died on the 22nd of March, 1876, aged 79. And their second daughter, Eleanor Lucinda, who died on the 6th of January, 1894, aged 69 years old. That's the old church there. Now some graves you might see along the way, like this one here. There's no inscription on it. Just a slate with no, you know, no names or dates or anything on it. So it's sad to see that people back in the day, I suppose, couldn't afford a headstone. So they just use a slate marker or a stone marker, like the ones there in the distance. Um, it's hard to know. There could be a, a, a vault here, guys, or a crypt. There's a bit of a mound in that hill there that makes me think there could be. You can just see, just there, you can see a kind of a, a mound, a hill in the ground. So there could be a, a vault underneath, underneath that. And this one here is in memory, the mortal remains of John, John Lloyd, who died on the 18th of August, 1853, or maybe that could be a 33, aged 75 years old, John Lloyd. And they're nice looking graves, those. They're very strong, yeah. Well preserved, the stone. So I'll take you over here first before we go to the graves of the victims of the tragic boat, boating accident back in 1835. So here are some of the Commonwealth war graves. G. Geddes, skipper. H.M. Drifter, Speedwell, 28th of October 1916, age 45 years old, until the day break. We can see the anchor on it there. So these are new headstones that were erected. And we have a G. Geddes here, the same name, Trimmer. H.M. Drifter Speedwell, the 28th of October, 1916, aged 18. So we have two headstones here with the same names on them. So I wonder, were they related in some way? Maybe father and son, it could be senior and junior. So just here it says, this memorial records the names of the men of the RNVR who were lost when their armed drifter HMD Speedwell ran aground and was wrecked at Splaw Rock off Green Ore Pint Ross Lair in Stormy Seas on the 28th of October 1916. To whom the fortune of war denied them the known and honoured burial given to their comrades in death and who are otherwise buried in this graveyard and we we'll just read the names that's on it there it says george geddes 
that's the G get us we've seen there in the headstone maybe skipper senior George get us William Young Alexander Blackhall George Blackhall James P Burns James Hendry James Thomas James Watt William Wiseman and there's a lovely shamrock down there it says lest we forget 1914 to 1918 that's first world war so it was erected by wexford branch royal british legion with the grateful support of the wexford and Kilscorn union of parishes in 2021 so not too long ago they erected that beautiful headstone there in memory of these people from the war this is W. Young, engine man, R and R, in the HM Drifter as well. Speedwell, 28th of October, 1916. Just behind those headstones, we have another sailor's grave here. W. S. Glover, Chief Officer, S. S. Masaba. The 1st of September 1916, aged 39 years old. And if I find anything on that boat, I'll put the picture of it up. So I'm just going to read um, a couple more around here. Some nice old ones over here now. Sacred to the memory of Mr. Francis Edensor of Manchester, who departed this life on the 19th of August, 1833, at the house of Mr. O'Farrell at Rosslair, aged 24 years old. And I've never seen that before in a headstone. Very interested, Mr. Francis. Eden, sir, from Manchester in England, and it says he died at the house of Mr. O'Farrell in Rosslair. Some nice stone ones here with the stone crosses on them. In memory of Francis William Bostock. Uh, he was born in 1882 and died in 19, 1908. Maybe it's hard to, to read that. Yeah, so that's the old graveyard here. St. Peter's Church. So I'm going to take you over now and we can pay our respects to those people I was telling you about the headstones here of the men and children who drowned on the Rosslayer Coast Guard boat. And just on the first one here we can see sacred to the memory of Eliza daughter of Robert and Sarah Green. And you can just see there it says, who was drowned returning from Wexford to Rosslare Fort on March the 17th, 1835, aged only four years old. There's a lovely inscription down here. It says, This lovely bud, so young, so fair, called hence by sudden doom, just came to show how sweet a flower in paradise would bloom. Isn't that beautiful, the inscription at the bottom of the headstone? So that's Eliza, and she's the daughter of Robert and Sarah Green. Was only four years old that drowned. 
And then next door to that then we have here, to the memory of James Harmer, who was drowned with three of his children, returning from Wexford to Rosslair Fort on the 17th of March, 1835, aged 46 years old. Now just behind the, those graves, we have more here. Um, and I think this must be someone that was a part of that tragic accident that day. And it's just a small little headstone and it says EG, the initials on it. And just beside the EG headstone here, we have to the memory of James Jupp, who was drowned with one son, returning from Wexford to Rosslare Fort on the 17th of March. And you can see the date there as well, 1835, aged 33 years old. So there's a number of graves in this area of the people who drowned. And there we have one there that just says R.H. J.H. B.H. So they're all the one family, I'd say, with the same initial on it. They're the, the second surname is H. And just here in this headstone we have to the memory of Thomas Hooper of Barn Staple in the county of Devon, late commander boatman in Her Majesty's Coast Guard at Rosslare Fort, who was drowned with two sons returning from Wexford to the fort on the 17th of March, 1835, aged 39 years old. And then we have Benjamin here. And it's actually spelled different because yeah, the old, the old, yeah. the old uh, writing, yeah, but there would be a J instead of a G in that. And Benjamin was only f aged 15 years old. John aged 11 years old. And Richard, who died May the 20th, 1834 age two years old so, so, so how tragic is that yeah so the year before that on the 20th of may he already had lost richard who was two years old so a year after that he lost more children these three stones are his children with benjamin oh that's richard what it is John. yeah that's what it is so well spotted there i didn't see that yeah, so we have here, that's um, Thomas Hooper. So that's what the H is. So here we have Benjamin. Here we have Benjamin. And here we have J, what I think is John, is it? Yeah. John. And here we have R. So that's his three children. Those small headstones there are his three children. And you have the bigger headstone just there. So, very tragic story, and rest in peace to all the men and children. Seven children and five adults, I believe, died on that terrible accident in the boat.
so guys if you like this video please give it a thumbs up hit the subscribe button it's free to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell the notification bell will let you know when I upload another cemetery video so for me here grave visitations take care god bless and rest in peace to everybody that's buried here i'll talk to you soon